Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Sonata. So first of all, I would like to clarify two points. Uh, the first one, this Sonata is nothing to do with the interface of MEF between two uh, inter-code, inter-service um, uh, platforms, or service providers, sorry, uh, communication. This is not this interface. You will see what it is in a minute. And the second is that it's a big challenge when it is really afternoon, um, fourth day of the conference. It seems that every, everything has been set already. So you have to listen about what um, transformation it is necessary to do automation, is about DevOps, it's about a journey. So in the end, all the topics have been covered. So it is difficult to, to take that. Excellent, thank you. Um, to understand uh, where uh, we are and what Sonata is bringing to, to the arena. So uh, as we are in the open, uh, source in the open um, track. I would like to just to launch some key messages about what is the situation in open source. In fact, we have just seen um, in terms of open source, there are a lot of developments ongoing. That's, that's a reality. Um, you take ONAP in this meeting room as crowds because they are announcing a new, new release in, in, in November, first release. Let's see how, how it goes, Amsterdam. Um, OSM is being uh, consolidated, maturing, it's announced release three sooner. So release two is out, and this is under the umbrella of Etsy. We have, and we all know about Court, Onos as the SDN controller. We have Sonatas, I will introduce in a minute. And we have other developments uh, like OpenNFV that is packaging some of the controllers plus OpenStack in one release and others like Cloudify that are or open beta. So there is a trend that the open source is gaining acceptance on one hand and is becoming to be more mature. That's, that's a fact. But if you look at the reality, what is happening, in terms of adoption, all operators, absolutely all of them has run already their proof of concept, their pilots, their absolutely all of them. For at least for the last, what, three years, four years, for sure they are uh, covered their proof of concept. And there are some lessons learned or some promise, difficulties that um, they have facing and they not reach the promises that were associated to the NFV. The first point was related to, to the fact that the infrastructure itself, the SDN NFV, is not um, as stable as, as it, it wished. It's complicated to tune to prepare the, the, the NFVI, the infrastructure. Sometimes we have seen, when you look at the BNFs, they are not interoperable. If you want to have a BNF and you use it uh, in an orchestrator, that's fine. When you want to use it over another orchestrator, it is not compatible. There is no interoperability. So when you go to really have, and you want to have a multi-vendor environment, this is not happening. So you, you can use the BNFs that are somehow adapted or filled to, to certain orchestrators. That's one, another, another key point. Also, for the moment, this, that promise, do you remember at least two or three years ago, there will be plenty of network services that you will be able to go, grab some of them, build up on top, and create even your services. There will be marketplaces. This is not happening yet. Um, that's a, if you look at the descriptors, this is a, also, if you look at how the BNFs are described and the network services, um, call it templates, descriptors, blueprints, are all different. So they are not compatible. And there is also one that I like it very much, that is this, this thing about um, always additional development is needed. That's a, that's a good one. It's time that you go for a, an open source community, you download or you use your, their framework and your, their orchestrator, they tell you, well, it would be necessary that you take this VNF and you trick this and also try to customize this, but it's more than a customization. You really need to do additional developments on, on, on this. And this is something that clashes with the culture of the telecom operators, because I want this installed, ready, customized, and that's it. Not to do additional developments on top. And last but not least, I would like to highlight that some of the, let's say, advanced futures that were promised associated to the, to the evolution of network services are still not there. Uh, despite the fact that some market it 
marketing messages uh, appear. One is, for instance, in the slicing, the properly slicing of the network across several segments. This is not happening. That's reality. This is the result of the proof of concepts. Um, to have a pure, pure auto scaling of the VNFs is something complicated with, with um, self healing mechanisms, how to scale, and so on. The recursiveness of the platforms in order to have some hierarchy is something that when you go for a larger scale deployment is needed. And uh, there are some vendors, oh, I, I see also, for instance, Court going for a solution, having a, an umbrella over there, but it's still uh, run. Uh, there are some, a lot of different uh, functionalities that still need to be there. And this is some lessons learned and facing the reality. And the problem is that if you look how open source communities work, software uh, community works, and how the traditional telecom industry is, is used to, this is completely clashing. Because on one hand, you have the open source community that take a standard. OK, let's take let's see, um, let's see NFV, some of the releases, and look at the interfaces. You go for the implementation of this. And the open source community immediately makes a decision and try to expand or extend the descriptor, because they need it. So in the moment that they do this, it is not a standard anymore. It's an implementation of that specification or that recommendation, and happens all the time. So if there is not a standard associated to this, there is not a clear certification process associated to, to this. And then the last promise of the interoperability is not met. So that's, that's the reality is what, on one hand, gaining acceptance open source, and the other is facing the, the situation that we have. So that's the reason why everybody says that we are in this post-era uh, uh, situation about NF, NFV. That the consequence of that equation that I, I just mentioned is that the communication service providers has been postponing certain investments, how to buy some services, how to buy. And the second consequence of that is that the vendors, the selling forecasts that they have, are not fulfilled. And they are suffering. They are really suffering all, all, all around. And in the, in the, everybody is trying to, to see how, how to sell it. But this is the reality. If you put this into the equation together with the DevOps culture that everybody has mentioned during the, the Congress, uh, that is necessary within the, the Communication service providers change the culture, how the, the teams are working in order to be more agile internally. But, not, but the point is, it is not neither even inside one organization. What is happening now is that you need to create a DevOps circle that goes across organizations because the vendors are providing you some VNFs. Someone needs to integrate and, and do a network service, a chain. Someone needs to validate and certify this, and after that, run to the operation. So this is a circle that goes across more than a team that is under the umbrella of one organization. It's across several organizations, and this is even more difficult. So let's say that the most difficult part is how to make this operational, and is where a lot of operators are struggling. How to, OK, we have done our proof of concept. How Let's do this operational. Uh, not to talk about the legacy elements uh, and, and so on. So it's what I was saying. When you know, someone in the, in the telecom industry, wants, the classical network service, wants to create a new one, so it takes a lot of time in terms of development, creating, putting, and the development times are large. So the time to market is, is. and then the boarding process in order to certify, test it, and, and put it in, in, in production. This led us to some long time or time to market. And also sometimes because a lot of tests are not automatic, are due to the manual processes that are necessary in, in, the, in, in the testing and the val validation and verification. So um, that's, that's the situation. Instance, when you look at the software community, the co software community is much more uh, agile, differently, work differently because the software is con constructed continuously. On one hand, um, each time that there is a modification, the software can be updated, can be refactored. If there are functions that are repeated uh, or duplicate functions, it is compacted and can be consolidated. So everything is much more faster in this uh, 
CD, CI, CD way of working in the software community. And we need to merge this together. And uh, to, in addition to the DevOps across organization that we have mentioned. So if you want to push for, forward the, the, what are the key points to push forward the adoption of NFV, the first one is, is quite obvious, as it mentioned, let's focus on services, not the underlying technology, because little by little this is maturing and will come. So um, let's, when we, I say services, immediately appears the concept of orchestration end-to-end -end across, different, across different network sec uh, segments. So to focus on the global orchestration is a key point. Um, something that many people forget and is not covering is the point on facilitating the creation and not only the creation, how you build up a network service, not the VNF, but the combination, but also the certification of the service, how you validate, how you test it. To be consistent and, and strict in this period in order to have uh, the network service ready for the operational environments is a key. And finally, something that has been um, mentioned several times is about the, the need to update, upgrade, let's say, the, um, be, uh, to create a more modern way of working on the OSS or the operational support systems of the operator in order to really to scale to that situation. So and having said that, what Sonata has provided? What is our offering? What is um, what we propose? So Sonata has been running, it's a, an open source project that has been running for the last two years more than two years already. So, um, and it's providing on one hand um, a service platform with a Mano uh, orchestrator integrated inside that allow you to optimize the deployment of the network services and try to optimize the uses of resources uh, for the, for the net, for network service providers. And one of the points is, yes, of course, is, is uh, running over, an, over multi POPs. A second part or big piece in, in the project is related to the environment of the dev environment. That is the, the, net, uh, the service development kit, the SDK, that is a set of tools that give you the possibility to create the network service, combine and create your chain, and also go for testing and some verification and checks of, of, the, of your, and we will see this, this process of the creating the service and deploy it in, in the presentation just after. And the project has been working always against this, the, the, the extended DevOps model that I have just mentioned across several organizations. And this is something that has been working for, for these two years. And let, just to mention that the new release of the Sonata platform covering the SDK and the operational part is available from September this, this month. And this is in fact our uh, fifth release because as internally we are working in agile uh, and continuous integration, continuous delivery way of working, time to time we do an update. So um, um, when it's necessary, we can provide uh, a release in a matter of days, if necessary. Um, if I look from very high, high level perspective, what I'm saying is that on one hand, you have the, all the tools that are necessary uh, to support the developers um, when you create um, a network service, how to create the chain, how to uh, debug and, and some testing tools. Also important to mention that um, two points. One is if you want to run this locally, there is also an, em an emulator. And this piece concretely has been contributed to the OSM community and has been accepted. So this, this emulator that we have created will appear in the release three of OSM. Also, we have the packaging tool, so because you need to create the packets before going for the onboarding process. On the other hand, another big piece is the service platform itself with different models, and inside we have the Mano, Mano orchestrator, the Mano framework. There are some innovations associated to this. It's, um, on one hand, it's based on plugin architecture and some microservices, so uh, some of the behavior of the network service can be inferred um, through code uh, in, the in, the in the network service development. So this is an innovation that 
in fact, no other service platform is offering. It's a key point in order to modify the behavior of your network services by programming, really programming this. It is not just a workflow. It is not just with different exceptions, but you can really program the behavior of the service through this mechanism. It's vendor agnostic, um, also got respecting the Etsy-based um, uh, architecture. It's develop an architect for, for DevOps uh, way of working across organization, as I, as I mentioned. And also, I want to mention this recursion support. That is something that when you go across, um, to be honest, there are no other service platforms that are offering this recursivity and has uh, some, some interesting uh, benefits when you need to expand across the network of an operator. Um, just to recap that we have the Insonata, the version 3, released. Um, we have done a lot of effort in order to have a, let's say, more product-oriented code test uh, during in this release, so I'm, we are, I think we are very proud of having something that you can download and use, and is simply to install. In fact, just to mention that we have also delivered Sonata in what we call Sonata in a VM case, case that you want to simply play with it in an easy way. You can use it, download it, and point out to uh, OpenStack installation or use the emulator, and you could even run it uh, and play with it. Uh, locally, so there are new functionalities like uh, develop um, and deploy the, the the service across several uh, POPs. Also, we have been working with the interfaces towards the OSS system, the SLA, the licensing of the VNFs that needs to be controlled. Um, and it, it, one of the key points is to to low uh, uh, the entry barrier for third-party developers in in the equation, and we'll see this in in the next slide. Um, one piece or, or, or new evolution of Sonata is something that will happen. So what is going to happen? Sometimes it's ask, some people asking, what is going to happen with Sonata? Because this is, is a project, an open source project. For how long you are you going to run this? So just to announce that uh, we have secured two years additional investment um, in order to introduce more and more functionalities. And I want to highlight one point. One is, uh, do you remember the high-level high perspective of Sonata? Uh, on one hand, we have the SDK, and the other part is the operational uh, service platform. So in the middle, um, one of the key points of research that we are going to do and we are doing uh, at this moment is about all the me necessary methods and mechanisms to do the verification and validation of the network services. First, of the VNFs itself, and other um, of the network service. And qualify this over several platforms, um, in the sense that you need to be strict and go for a bad battery of, of tests and automate all this process in order to check and say this is certified. Certify over what? Over sorry, certify over uh, an OSM platform, our uh, Sonata platform, and the same. This can be uh, something that happens a validation done by a third party, or it could be inside the operator. Can, they can have their pre-production mirror infrastructure, that is the way, uh, normal way of use, working on the operation uh, part, and qualify the services here over different platforms. So that's one of the next steps that we are working, um, also embracing the, the TTCNC3 uh, of Etsy standard in order to be sure that we are uh, following and we are straight on, on that. Also targeting the full recursivity and introducing a new new functionalities like slicing, and this is going to happen in the coming in the coming uh, months. Um, if we look at what how the in this extended DevOps and where it's playing, when when you look at take this take uh, you look at the programmability of the service, this would be more on the side of the vendor that could be third party or it could be vendors. There is a big piece that is needed to be covered on the verification and validation of, of your service. And sometimes uh, I've seen other projects, open source communities that are overlooking that piece. And third part is before going to the operation in which you work on the operational, operational part. So it depends in which part of this extended DevOps uh, we are supporting and providing a set of tools to, to run with, with them. 
Um, nothing else. This is the set of the consortium that is supporting the, this development. We have telecom operators, we have several vendors. And, and just to reinforce the fact that this, this release three is not the last one. This, this will continue and, and will, will continue and there will be an evolution for, during the last two years, the next two years. So that's all on my site. If you want to download the software or just play with it, see demos or documentation, you will find it all, all of here. Thank you very much.